Hello again and thanks for checking out my videos. Um, I'm going to have a look right now at a 6139-6002. So these ones, as any watch collector knows, is really hot property and uh, they were one of the only watches that's gone to space. Specifically uh, worn by Colonel William Pogue on the, I think it's one of the Skylab missions. So he stated that he used the uh, inner ring there uh, as, a, as a, a helper in timing engine burns or something like that. So he had this on one wrist and I think a, a Speedmaster on the other one. Um, it apparently wasn't authorised by NASA and he snuck it on, something along those lines, and he said it worked perfectly in space. But anyway, this one is not working so perfectly. And uh, the reason I'm, I'm doing this film today, and I'm, I'm going to do more on these, uh, a lot more, um, is just to show some of the things you should probably avoid when buying them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now this one, while pretty much original, is probably an example of, of a watch that you might want to steer clear of. So the first thing you'll notice <clears throat> is you'll notice the white ring around there. Now what happens is they're originally yellow. They only ever came in yellow or black with the yellow dial. And the yellow and black combination was pretty much only sold in Australia and some parts of Asia from what we can work out. And why that variation came out, I've got absolutely no idea. But uh, we, we've officially confirmed it, and I know personally that uh, I've got some photos that, that from the period that confirmed that it did exist. But the vast majority in the wild have a yellow ring there. And that tends to fade to white uh, with UV exposure, and that's definitely what's happened here. Now, these rings are completely unavailable. You just, you just cannot get them. Uh, sometimes you can dye them and make them a few shades darker but that sometimes that brings them good uh, or good enough to wear and but most times it won't so if they've gone white like this what that what that means is that the outer layer of plastic is actually completely oxidized and uh, when it's oxidized like that it won't take a dye so that's pretty much the end of the road um, the glass on this is not too much of a concern that's easy to replace the bezel insert you can get uh, an aftermarket one. They're not as robust as the original, but they look exactly the same. So just having a look at other things on here as well, the, the dial on this watch is actually quite good. Um, usually they're not less good, so quite often they have a bit of a black ring around the sub-dial there. And the reason that is is because when they're sprayed, because the process that they use to make these dials, they're actually machined out of an aluminium disc, and then they add a clear yellow to it, and then they put a clear lacquer over it. Uh, so what happens is on the corners of that dial, because it's recessed in, <coughs> excuse me, it uh, the paint's quite thin, gets a bit of moisture in there, which gets into the uh, the aluminium, and it makes it go black. So that that's what happens with them. Um, the loom is is pretty average, but that can be fixed. So just having. I mean, look there at other other things. The hands are actually the correct colour. So these came with two different colour dials. So they came with this and a midnight blue dial. The midnight blue dial comes with what, well, what we term tomato red hands. So they're an orange red or a red orange, depending which way you want to look at it. But uh, they're basically the same colour as a as a Ferrari. Uh, if you see a Ferrari in person, they're a very slight tinge of orange to the red and they're not like a blood red. Whereas the yellow dial versions took a blood red uh, sweep hand and also a minute counter hand. And that's what you see here. So you know straight away that they're original. So just having a look at the rest of the case there, the case has been polished previously and it's had a very hard life as well. So you'll see there there's a fair bit of, um, fair bit of damage to it. So if we look on this side here, when these were new, they had razor-sharp razor edges, and you can see here this, this is not so new. So it looks like it's also had a bracelet break. You can see there the bracelet's worn into there. If you're wearing vintage watches often, I suggest that probably every six months or so you drop the bracelet off and just clean out dirt. Because what happens is the dirt gets in there, and with a bit of skin oil, a bit of moisture and a bit of dirt 
the motion of the bracelet moving will grind in a groove like that. And that's pretty much the end of the case. So if I put a bracelet on that now, it's going to be really sloppy. <clears throat> and that you don't want to happen. So having a look at the crown here, this is one of the one of the things that took me a little while to figure out. So you'll see there, it's a different colour to the rest of the case. Now these crowns are meant to be stainless steel and they're meant to be shiny. But you look on the edge there and you should be able to see it. You should see a bit of brass poking through there. So this crown is some sort of aftermarket or um, replacement crown that's been at, that's been uh, done in the past, <clears throat> and it's a brass crown that's been rhodium or or copper or um, uh, or chrome plated or something along those lines, and it's and it's worn since then. So that's something you really want to steer clear of. The the crowns on these and also the stems are one of the biggest biggest problems of these watches. So they have a funny stem which has an additional square section on the back and when that and what will happen is if the gaskets aren't changed regularly that stem will break and uh, the whole gear and spring system which runs the inner rotating bezel shoots out with the crown when the stem breaks and that, that's a very common mode of failure with these so you'll see here I can move the stem and it's not going to it's not going to rotate the ring now the cost to re repair that is actually quite a bit so Generally, I wouldn't recommend it unless it's a fairly good unit. Um, but if we just pop the back off, and I, I will do a better video on how that stem system works because it's it's a real gotcha on the on these watches. But generally, I recommend if this if the inner rotating ring doesn't turn, don't buy it. So you'll see there, as well. The balance wheel is black. Now I've got absolutely no idea why it's black. It could have dirt on it, it could be corroded, something along those lines, but it shouldn't be black. It should be a bright brass. So if I repair that and use that wheel without cleaning it or replacing it, we're going to get really bad timekeeping because that adds weight to that wheel and that's the most sensitive part of the watch. So that's something else that would need to be replaced on this. The rest of the movement looks okay. So you could certainly certainly rebuild the rest of it but that balance something needs to be done about that and you should be able to see that on the camera but that's actually quite serious there so that could also suggest there's something something wrong with the hairspring and uh, that's a big problem for timekeeping on a, an accurate watch so if we look at the case back here as well you'll notice this is about worn down to a nub so the edges are quite rounded, you can barely see the, the embossing there. So that's not good. <clears throat> so in summary, um, with these watches, I wouldn't buy it if the ring is drastically off colour. <clears throat> the rings are unavailable. To get another one you're probably going to have to scrap another watch. Um, there were some available for a while, uh, new old stock, but they seem to have dried up now. Um, if the case is bad, that can be replaced easy enough. If the dial's bad, as if it's got lots of marks on it, don't buy it. The dials are impossible to get, and the reproduction dials look terrible. If it's got a bit of a black ring around the sub-dial there, that's okay. Most of them get that to some degree. Um, if the crown is wrong, probably don't buy it. Currently the stems are available and you can get these parts and certainly I manufacture the, the gears and springs that go in there um, at a pretty good price. Um, but yeah, um, if the stems ever became less available than what they are then um, I, I definitely would steer well clear of it. But uh, yeah, there you go. So I'm going to do a much better video on this. I've, I've got several of them here. and I can go through some of the variations and some of the things to avoid and some of the things to look for. But um, yeah, I just happen to have this here and I know there are high interest items. So I thought I'd, I'd give it a go. And uh, if you've got any questions, um, feel free to ask in the comments section and uh, feel free to subscribe as well. So I'm going to try and keep churning these out on a fairly regular basis and try and help some people out. So yeah, I'll leave it there and, and thanks for watching.